Good morning, monkeys. Welcome to the next episode of Monkey Lundia here at Coaster Monkey Studios. And we've got a full one for you today, guys. Uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Gabriel Coaster Monkey. And what do I do? Well, I play Plant Co. I visit theme parks and I record vlogs. And uh, if you like what you see here today, definitely make sure you click like and subscribe down below for more content. There's a lot of good stuff coming your way. And this is if this is not your first time, then uh, welcome back. What do we got going on today? Well, last episode we built the beast. No, not the beast from King's Island. This is the beast water coaster. Uh, and this water coaster is based on the beast boat ride uh, that you can find uh, on the Hudson River in New York City. Or, sorry, the East River. Don't want to confuse that for all my New York City peeps. But yeah, so what are we doing here? Well, we are building out the station for it. So what was the inspiration for this station? Well, you saw in the intro credits there uh, the Staten Island Ferry Station. And yes, this is the closest representation that I chose to dig into notice the uh, terminology I'm using there. So I chose to build it in this manner because I wanted it to be a certain way, right? So as we progress through, you guys can see it. But this is the closest I can get to really uh, interpret interpreting it as best as I can. Obviously, I've taken creative liberties on my own to fit Monkeylandia, but I am totally cool with that. Uh, I hope you guys are too. So we've gotten rid of that funky queue that we had up front and we kind of just did a massive chunk of, of pathing out in front of the structure and here we are uh, just gray boxing out kind of what the structure is going to look like this is going to be the gift shop slash photo booth or the photo area yes we're going to make a, a ride photo area this will be the first one for this ride we're going to have a little camera that snaps too don't worry that's going to be coming soon as well and uh, yeah, we've got this uh, whole area that we're gray boxing out here. In this instance, we're setting up kind of what the plaza is going to look like. I guess there's going to be a plaza in front, um, as you saw in the intro credits there, uh, with an awesome Nautilus sign. I don't remember if we do it this episode or next episode. Yes, there's going to be two episodes on the building of this particular structure. It's going to be... Uh, kind of massive and I cut out a lot of back and forth work that I did uh, There's gonna be a massive promenade that we build that wraps around the exterior a second floor if you will and That's gonna house uh, some interior stuff that we'll see in the next episode, but Essentially what we're looking at at this point here is gonna be um mostly the exterior and then we're going to do a very loose cut of the promenade that we build all the way around so don't stress too much because i 100 percent cut out the back and forth work that i was doing with the promenade as well as the plaza area there was a lot of uh, footage i trimmed out to save you guys the torture but what are we doing here so i'm again gray boxing out uh what the promenade's gonna look like now the original promenade of the staten island ferry station it it's got these weird tendrils that kind of stick out and i was trying to figure out how i was going to make the tendrils happen and i wind up forgoing the tendrils in the tendrils in the end as you can see but essentially this is what we're going after as far as the height goes now i don't know why and it seems to happen every time I do a build, but I can never get, when I'm building multiple buildings, the height's perfectly aligned, uh, and I always screw it up. So there's slight, very, very, very minuscule, slight variations in height uh, in all these different buildings that I'm creating here to create the promenade, but I, I do fix it in the end. So thank God for that. 
and again, what you're seeing here is not the final product. Uh, this is just me gray boxing out. And, and I use the term gray boxing so much, I'm just gonna have to like coin it, like hashtag gray box. What the hell? <laughs> but you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. I, I just want to figure out, you know, what is it gonna feel like? Now, in real life, that's what it looks like uh, without the Minecraft esque boxy look. It's more rounded, obviously. But, um,. I tell you, I prefer gray boxing out and then coming back and kind of doing my own thing off grid. Uh, that's kind of where I'm at. So what am I doing now? Well, the Staten Island Ferry Station, it's basically a giant atrium with a roof and a back wall, right? So it's all glass. So what I wanted to do was the whole ideology behind this particular building and how it's set up is I'm just going, I'm gonna have the whole thing be glass. So that no matter where you are, whether it be in the plaza, whether it be in King Coaster Circle, or anywhere where that view is obstructed, you're going to have uh, a view of the Brooklyn Bridge and the Beast Coaster behind it. And that's the intention that we're going after uh, with this particular build. And I think, crossing my fingers, but I think it was a, a, a pretty good, pretty good job overall. I've got a couple of things that I've done here that I took liberties on again in comparison to the real life one. But it's a theme park. It's not a recreation. Right? So we are we are going, you know, the French balls to the wall here and kind of mixing life and art, right? Art imitates life, which imitates art, and so on and so forth. Well, we're doing a nice little blend of the two. Yes, so this actually exists in real life. So the Staten Island Ferry in New York City, the Staten Island Ferry Station, has these giant letters. And in all honesty, they are that big. Um, <laughs> in real life, yes, they are. And I know one of the, the biggest statements in the world uh, of Planko is the letters. Those letters are ginormous. Uh, but I love them. I think they're awesome. I think they work out very, very, very well. All right, so here we are using Hydro Beams. Uh, shout out to Hydro. The entire build uh, in this video is, is all Hydro Beams. And I use them for spacing. I, I mean, they're just the perfect size. I could have used the regular beam that comes in the game but it would have been too thick and I wanted the variation because in real life there is massive variation in in the different beams and I think it works out very well I'm, I'm very pleased with the final product So one of the things I was running into, and again, I'll mention it again. I know I mentioned it on the Planet Coaster Artists Discord, but uh, I cannot figure out global gridding. <laughs> um, yeah, don't ask me. I have no idea how the difference between global and, and relative gridding works. I think it's even called relative gridding. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. Uh, I've got to go back. All of these beams need to be hand adjusted uh, to match up. I'm going to go back and do that at some point, but I don't think I have the mental capacity to do that at the moment. I may have an anxiety attack. Uh, but yeah, so in real life, this building, it, it's a giant uh, trapezoid, and then the trapezoid on the roof portion is, it comes on an angle in the front of it, and the back levels off. Slightly. So I wanted to mimic that look, uh, and I think I did a pretty good job with it. Uh, again, the variation in the beams, uh, they're all distant. Yes, I am. Let's make sure OCD. But anybody who plays this game, you know OCD is what we do. <laughs> if you're not obsessive compulsive, uh, you're not going to create an amazing product. <laughs> 
So here we are putting in the glass. So glass, I've got so many issues with the glass. I mean, it's just such a headache to get it to look how you want it to. And again, I save you guys a lot of headache in watching me try to figure out how to position the glass on these weird angles. And then you've got the overlap. I was trying to create a pattern with overlap. And let's just say that uh, I got the it's good enough bug. Oh, hold on a moment. My computer's talking to me. Alexa, be quiet. Wow, isn't that funny? Alexa got sassy. I don't know why she started talking. That's funny. Yes, we are in a we are an Alexa household here. Uh, we've got Alexas all over the place. So back to our glass. Maybe she misunderstood the glass. I don't know. Anyway, so back to our glass. So yeah, so you can see I've got I got to the point where I was just like, it's good enough. You know what I mean? There's slight over overlap. Um, see, I was trying to do like a cool pattern there. Please, I was very frustrated with the entire glass endeavor. I think I'm gonna not go as complicated in my structures with glass any longer because it's just it doesn't it doesn't fulfill the need or let me rephrase the end product doesn't gratify me as much as it should so i love the look that this building has from the outside, you know, and looking from that plaza or from King Costa Circle, you know, again, it's all about the, the, the sight lines, right? So you've got great sight lines of this coaster in multiple different, from multiple different angles. And uh, again, that's what we were going after, right? We wanted to create those sight lines. As we were placing the buildings down, we placed the, the bridge down, we placed the coaster down. And you've got a number of sight lines uh, throughout the throughout the structure uh, structures, I should say. Whether you're inside of the building, up on the little terrace that we've created, and you'll see in the next episode what we do with that terrace. It gets stoked. It's actually kind of really cool. And one of the bigger challenges I ran into outside of the glass was these, these awkward angles for the roof. Now, not only is it a trapezoid and you've got these weird angles going out, but then you've got this angle going up as well. So trying to make sure all of the beams matched and then all of the glass was covered in these awkward angles. Again, I saved you guys a lot of headache in watching me do that. Um, so you get a little bit more of like a, a end product kind of deal. But what I do love about it is the fact that once I figured it out and how to do it, uh, it went pretty smoothly and you're going to see that here. Uh, it's not that hard of a process. I think the bigger issue that I run into again is just that when I move things left to right or, or, or try to follow the axis. Uh, they go off slightly. I can't figure out why. I don't know if it's because the hit point is off. Um, but it happens on everything, even Planko specific uh, or Planko or original Planko assets. So I just, I, don't, I can't figure it out. I don't know. Global Gridding. If you got any uh, feedback or, or anything you want to tell me, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> So here you get to see me, you know, working on this, this angled roof now. Uh, again, these angles were so important because this is, this is really what makes the building. And again, from an interior standpoint, as well as an exterior standpoint, it's, it's a gorgeous structure. And I wanted it to have that same type of feeling uh, from real life to Planko.
Well, to think the amount of stuff that I cut out, and I'm still watching this going, wow, this is repetitive. <laughs> well, again, I want you guys to see the process, right? The process was not easy. And uh, feel free to fast forward. <laughs> Now, a lot of people say use grid pieces to get like that perfect spacing. But what I, I find easy is just you take two, two items that are next to each other. You duplicate uh, advanced move. And then you just, you know, set the spacing in between just like I did there. I know you guys saw that, you know, pretty cool, pretty cool setup there. But there we are with the full grid on top. I didn't want to you know, show you the opposite side because I was a little redundant considering I just did the right side. But uh, yeah, so we got that all in. And I feel like, you know, once we come back, we take a really sharp look at uh, the promenade uh, in the next episode. You guys are really going to dig, you know, the final look, kind of what this ends up looking like. Here we are trying to mimic that glass pattern that I had created and again ran into a couple of opportunities. We still have the stripe down the center and this goes along the entire structure, but the opportunity I ran into again with these funky corners and angles and why they wouldn't make triangular glass pieces, I have no clue. But you see where the, I don't understand why. I mean, I literally just advanced move duplicated to the left and to the right. Why would there be any angle off, angles off, or any beams lower than the other? I just, again, if somebody could explain that to me, I'd greatly appreciate it. But here I am getting into the, well, it's good enough phase with the glass. I was so over it. Now, mind you, this build took me a week or almost a week to do, uh, just to get it just right. In between doing other stuff, obviously, right? So we got, you know, a couple things we're fiddling around with. Here and there, jumping back to the coaster, tweaking the coaster. The coaster actually looks really great. I tweaked it quite a lot. Um, and uh, I'm happy with the direction that it's gone. To be frank with you, I'm hoping, crossing my fingers, but I'm hoping uh, the final product comes out exactly how I want it to, and I think it will. You know, we're heading that direction, so I'm super stoked on that. And what I wind up doing is I cover up some of this corner glass work as well with a thicker frame. Again, you know, obviously from a structure, structural stability standpoint, the frame's gonna be a little bit thicker around those edges, right? But look at that sight line. Like, I mean, it's just perfect. And there you have it guys. That is the first step to building the Staten Island Ferry Station for the Beast. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, click there to subscribe for more and catch you next time. Thanks so much. Ciao.